Okay, so today's unboxing is actually going to be captured with the Microsoft LifeCam uh, HD 5000. And uh, I'm going to be unboxing the Arctic Cooling Freezer Extreme Revision 2. And uh, so yeah, this is meant to be two things. An unboxing of this particular heatsink, as well as an example of what kind of video quality you can expect from the Microsoft LifeCam that I unboxed a little while ago. So you can see it is pretty clear. And uh, we're going to see how well it does with the close-ups, because the lighting, A, isn't great in my office, and B, I have these screens behind me, which makes it really difficult for even a good camera to focus and, uh, and get good focusing image quality. Okay, so let's unbox this heatsink. This is the Freezer Extreme Rev 2. It's like the Freezer Extreme except Revision 2. It has excellent compatibility, so it supports pretty much everything out there. 1366, 1156, 775, so that's all the Intel sockets at the moment. And then support for AM3, AM2+, and AM2, which are all the same, as well as 939. It still includes support for socket 939, which is pretty ancient at this point. All right, so we got unmatched cooling performance as a feature, unique twin tower. It's not so unique anymore. Lots of coolers are using the twin towers. Effective heat dissipation via eight heat pipes. That's pretty good. Patented fan holders eliminate buzzing sounds, voltage regulators, and Northbridge cooling. Uh, oh yeah, we can talk about that in a minute. Okay, pre-applied MX2, so it comes with a very high quality pre-applied thermal compound. That's huge, because you can get the best cooler in the world. If it comes with crappy thermal compound, you're gonna get crappy performance. All right, next we have, they only compare it against the stock cooler, so cooling performance as well as um, noise. Okay, they give you some dimensions here. So the fan runs at anywhere from 800 to 1500 RPM, and it is a PWM fan. And I think that's pretty much all I wanna say about the outside of the package. So why don't we get this thing opened up and have a look-see. So the first thing we find inside is a piece of paper, and that piece of paper has some writing on it in a couple different languages. Okay, so let's go to English because that's what I speak. Okay, step one, remove the fan, press the fan shoulders to unlock the fan and lift the fan upwards. Step two, so we've got six steps on this side and then seven steps for Intel and then five steps for AMD. So AMD looks to be a little bit simpler. Okay, let's take that out and then let's get uh, down to more accessories here. Okay, so we've got a little baggie of, this is Intel and it has two screws in it, okay? And then the next thing we have is what appears to be AMD mounting clips, as well as some little like, um, I don't know. I don't know what those are shaped like, but there they are. Okay, next we have the cooler itself. Wow, that was pretty straightforward as far as um, mounting hardware is concerned. So somehow they found a way to mount this using either two screws or like two little clippy things. Ah, here it is. So this is the back plate, I guess. How does this work? Well, you're smart people. I'm sure you can figure it out when you buy it and see the instruction manual. Okay, so the actual cooler itself. It has a plastic shroudy thing on the top and to remove the fan, you just squeeze that together and pull the fan out. Why don't we just remove the fan? Okay, so there's the fan. It's a 120 millimeter round fan. And what's a little bit special about this fan that I'm gonna point out right off the bat here is the fact that it is round and the fact that at the bottom, the frame is actually cut out. So you see how the frame is thick here, but then thin down at the bottom. So that's what they're talking about when they say you've got PWM cooling because this fan will actually, it'll blow directed air through the heatsink fins from the sides here, but then it has no, it has no, no air direction flow control here. So what it does is when it spins, it'll just kind of randomly blow air out the bottom, which will keep your voltage regulators as well as your memory modules, anything around your CPU socket a lot cooler. So that's pretty neat. All right, so why don't we have a look at the cooler itself? So like they said, they use a twin tower design. So that means that you're taking advantage not only of the air coming out of the fan, but also the air coming into the fan. And while it's not quite as effective as say taking these two, putting them side by side and throwing two separate fans on it, the air, once it's been through one set of fins is not that hot compared to the actual CPU. So it's still gonna do a fair amount of cooling on the other side. Now on the sides of this heatsink, we've got a couple more like plastic shroudy things and those uh, don't appear to come off. Okay, then if you look down into the bottom, you can see the mounting system a little bit better. 
I still am not 100% clear about how that works, but we're seeing the autofocus abilities of this life cam pretty well here, and it's doing a terrific job, actually. All right, fin, fin density. So here, why don't we... Ooh, let's look through the fins at the screen. I don't know what that proved, but now we've done it. Okay, four heat pipes at the bottom. These appear to be six millimeter heat pipes. They're not particularly thick, but my experience, it comes down to design more than, you know, marketing bullet points. So this is an excellent cooler and it does a great job. You've got the pre-applied MX2 here on the bottom. And I think that pretty much takes care of everything I wanted to say about the, uh, the Arctic Cooling Extre Freezer Extreme Rev2. Thank you for checking out my unboxing. And, oh yeah, we should talk about that, uh, that camera a little bit too. Let's have a look at the software. So this is the Microsoft LifeCam software. You can adjust uh, true color settings, which are over here. Uh, so you can turn that on and off. Oh, that's, so that's what happens if I turn off true color. It becomes a lot harder for it to control the, uh, well, the color. And it does a great job, actually, based on the video we just took. You can select a bunch of different modes for capturing video. We're using uh, 1280 by 720 HD video capture. You can adjust your micro microphone volume, which I hope is high enough after we've done this big long video. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for checking out my unboxing and uh, lots more video updates to come. Oh yeah, I have to turn it off. Fail. <laughs>